If you want to know how to make a wooden slinky, then stay tuned and find out if the spirals will have me going in circles, or will the slinky slink its way to success. My name is Ray, and this is Ray Whitby Creations. We're going to harness the power of wood turning and the awesomeness of laser cutting to turn a cylinder of wood into a super spiral of spruce. So let's get started. This was scrap wood that actually turned to a beautiful finish. Definitely worth avoiding wood with knots though, as they tend not to cut easily with a diode laser, at least not without charring the surrounding wood. The slinky looks fairly straightforward to produce. Just cut a continuous ribbon from a cylinder with a set chiral angle. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? This will prove to be another great test for the Auto YIR Rotary Rollers for cutting hollow cylinders. And it's also a logical extension to the previous project videos I've done. So why not check out the 3D jigsaw puzzle made using the rotary laser cutting technique. These cylinders are turned to about 5mm for the wall thickness, which means I can cut them in a single pass with my Niji E40 laser at about 85% power and 100mm a minute with air assist. I think trying to do this in several passes with the rollers can cause issues with tracking. This will come across as a labour intensive method for producing a slinky, but at least you get to play with lasers and lathes. What could be more fun than that? Well, for me, I could be eating a cheeseburger at the same time. My simple approach to designing the slinky was to unfold a cylinder into a rectangle, then stack boxes of defined height. A line is drawn across the diagonal of each box and given a set width. This forms the area to be cut away and should leave a continuous ribbon. I added thin white lines that were drawn vertically, and this will help separate the ribbon into smaller sections to be cut in the light burn. Once imported and aligned to the cutting area, a trace image function is run to set a path around the dark areas to be cut away. The path lines are ungrouped and then regrouped into horizontal sections. This allows the laser to cut across the piece in sections rather than following a single line around the entire cylinder before proceeding to cutting its neighbor. Now perhaps there's a better way to do this and retain the accuracy of the cut, so please let me know. One good thing about splitting the job into smaller sections is being able to properly track the development of the helix. You can see that there are areas where the laser has not kept alignment across the piece. This has been a little bit frustrating as I'm trying to see what factors might affect the tracking on the rollers and I cannot seem to reproduce the problems consistently. Anyway, the first attempt had some major issues when I tried to remove the cut pieces. The remaining helix was too thin and broke, often and after about 25 repairs, I decided to redraw the design and start the cutting process all over again. This time I chose a steeper angle with better separation of the light and dark areas. And this was to ensure a thicker ribbon that will remain after the cutting. And with the first cut complete, which was looking good, I could then get on with the rest of the design. For each new section, I would lightly burn one part of the line to check the alignment to the helical path. I could then make any micro adjustments to the position of the pattern if necessary, then follow up with the actual cut. The tracking on this particular cylinder turned out to be quite good. None of the cut lines actually wandered. Well, not many of them, although some pieces did fall out, even though I was using the tabs option in Lightburn. But thankfully it wasn't many, and I could stop the cutting process, remove the pieces, taking care not to jog the cylinder, and then resume the process. The total cutting time was about one hour per cylinder. This shot somewhat reminds me of the scene in Independence Day. Do you know that one where you're shouting at the rooftops that are full of people who are staring at the blue light and not running? 
or is that just me? I'll give you the 360 degree tour of the cylinder. Basically it cut well. The lines have joined up and should produce a more robust spiral. Now I'm looking at it, I'm thinking maybe I could have put a lighter cut between the adjacent horizontal sections to aid removal of the spine support. But obviously they needed to be in place, otherwise the spiral would unravel onto the rollers and no further cutting would be possible. The majority of the cut sections were easy to remove. Now I'm being conscious of the fact that the wood is quite thin and it took a little bit of time to get them all out. All it'll take is one heavy-handed moment and the piece will be crushed and it'll be back to the start. Once all the pieces were removed, the spine supports were sawn away and then sanded, very carefully sanded. With the first spiral of spruce complete, it's time to check it out. The response of the spiral appears to be good. It stretches and compresses elastically. Just how much it could stretch was not a test I was going to perform, as the time it took to make each piece may become rather precious over each creation. Now my apologies, but this has to be said. This is one of those occasions where size does matter and I'm going to need a couple more spirals. Thankfully I had anticipated this and had a couple more blanks ready to go. This is possibly the only time I've really enjoyed making more than one of the same thing on the lathe. Exact reproductions require a lot of patience. With these spirals I left the ends as long tapers which I could then glue two of them together and have a near seamless joint of the same thickness as the rest of the spiral. I used packing tape to ensure the CA glue did not spread further than the taper area, and then an accelerator to finish the job quickly. On reflection, it may have been better to have a square cut rather than a taper joint to bring them together. With a smaller gluing area, it may not have been as strong, but certainly would have been a lot neater, and maybe using less glue. And I think it's the glue that could have stiffened the long taper area, which may lead to a diminished performance. Of course, it would have been better to have cut the spiral from a single cylinder and maintained the grain pattern throughout its length. But after all, this was a prototype and it had to start somewhere. And I really like the contrast of the light wood against the dark laser burns along the exposed cut surface. Now I'm sure you're wondering whether it actually works. First attempt? Nope. Second attempt? Almost. Third attempt? Worked like a charm. The action needs improving, but it's there in essentials. I mean, it looks like a slinky, it walks like a slinky, and can even drop like a slinky. Much better to watch in slow motion. Sometimes the design process can go wrong, and in this prototype I forgot to rotate the image before laser cutting, and as the angle was so small I didn't even notice it until near the end of the cut. Thankfully I've invented anti-gravity which has helped suspend the rings in mid-air. Well thank you so much for watching, I hope you'll like and subscribe and comment below. Take care.